Hello everyone, it's Carrie, and in today's video I'm working on a Vampirella commission, but rather than a voiceover, I'll be doing part two of the Q&A session I did with my last video. I had a few questions remaining and wanted to get them answered for you. First, I'll just mention this commission was for a spin on Vampirella where the customer wanted the costume to be black. I also used Ascara Screams for the custom because the customer requested that, and I gave her a reroute with some special ordered alpaca fiber. I also sanded down the body really nicely since she was so scantily clad. <laughs> so let's get started on the Q&A. So the first question is from Love and Crunch. Can you give some beginner tips on making doll clothes? So this is a bit hard to answer, but I'd say I'd start with simple pieces. I used to rely on corsets and shorts that I made from vinyl, and I still use these in many of my costumes today. I have also, I've shown this in previous videos how I make them. They're really easy and you don't have to hem the vinyl, you can just leave the raw edge. So that's why they're good to use as a beginner. You can also use things like ruffle trims and lace for skirts and tube tops. And then start to try new and more difficult things as you go and you'll get, you'll continue to get better, just you have to just try. I also use a lot of fabric glue and fabric thermal tape. And those work great for small pieces so you don't have to show your stitching because um, if you're like me, your stitches aren't always even and I don't like to use the sewing machine because they're, it's just so small and it gives me a headache and I break needles and everything. So um, I like to use the thermal tape. It looks cleaner too. So from Dolls Redesigned, how do you film your videos? I only have an iPhone and have no idea where to place it while I try to work. Um, so I use a video camera, it's just a simple Sony camera, but I have it clipped onto a thing that I think, I think it's called like an elephant trunk or something, but it's like a bendy, uh, it's kind of bendy and it has a clip on each end. One, one clip clips onto the shelf and a shelf in front of me, and then another clips to the camera. And so if I can find something like that, I'll, I'll link it below. Um, from, also from Dolls Redesigned. I'm having a horrible time to get my artist quality watercolor pencils to work on face-ups, even with two and three coats of MSC. Any suggestions? Um, I would definitely say that it's the sealing process. Um, if it, it's I, a lot of times the the quality of the pencils really has not much to do with it. Um, there's some pencils that work and some don't. I've tried a lot of lower quality pencils that end up being, that end up working and others that don't. I would think it's definitely the sealing process. So if you're adding two and three, two or three coats, I would probably do three coats at least, three or four to start. And it may be how you're sealing it. So you'd wanna hold the, the can at least six inches away from the doll and then I just do a quick swoop back and forth. And then I let that dry for a couple of minutes. Then I do another swoop back and forth. Just very lightly, light sprays. You don't wanna coat it very thickly. If you're spraying too much and too close to the doll, then it's gonna build up this like kind of a shiny, um, shiny coat and not give you any tooth. You just wanna do very light sprays. So while you're adding a lot of coats, they're very light sprays. I hope that helps. I know the sealing process is really what you have to master for everything to work right. It's the most important process to me, part of the process to me. I hope that helps. <laughs> anyway, let me know if you have any more questions on that in the comment section below. So the next question is from Grace Howells on Instagram. How do you get the, pig, the pencil pigment to apply smoothly and stick? So I would say, again, that's the proper sealing process. So if you're using, I would definitely say use MSC, Mr. Super Clear, UV Flat. Um, it's definitely the best. If you're using anything other than Mr. Super Clear, UV Flat, then it's probably the sealant you're using. I, the matte works almost as good. There's a MSC matte, um, but nothing works as good as MSC Flat. So if you're having trouble with the pencil taking and you're not using MSC flat UV cut, um, that's the problem. Um, if you are having, if you're having trouble and you're using Mr. Super Clear UV cut flat, um, then it's how you're sealing. This, that's my opinion anyway. I think, I think that's the problem. I hope that helps. 
Um, then Leona Flower on Instagram asks, which dolls do you dislike from your collection of customs? Um, I guess I'm not crazy about a couple of my first dolls that I made. Like when I look back on them because, you know, I was new and I was learning. Um, but otherwise, I don't consider a doll finished until I like it. So I, I sell all of my dolls and if I finish a doll and I don't like it, I'm going to start all over or change it until I do like it. So I, I don't really have any that I've made that I don't like, if that makes sense. <laughs> Other than my first couple of dolls and that I'm like, oh, I was really needed to, uh, <laughs> you know, really not doing well at the time. But I, I still appreciate those for what they were and, you know, I liked them back then. <laughs> um... Okay, the next question is from Kozumolski Dolls on Instagram. What got you started? So, um, my partner Sam, he, uh, it was back around 2010 or 2011. He was a, an admirer of custom toys, and knowing that I was an artist, he asks me act, asked me to <laughs> customize one of those pop vinyl toys. Um, they're like by Funko and they're pop vinyls and he'd seen that other people were doing that So I remember I used one of the, I think it was one of the girls from the Incredibles maybe but I made her into a day of the dead like sugar skull girl and then like for several weekends in a row he would give me an idea and we'd get one of those toys and I would make it into something and it was just kind of a fun activity that we did together and then and so for a long time I probably like a year or two, um, I started, uh, we, we kept doing that. And then I started getting kind of antsy to do something more girly or something that I would like. So it was about early 2012 that I started customizing Monster High dolls. And I just love, always loved Monster High dolls. I used to, um, I used to use paint as for, at first, but then I started studying up on ball jointed dolls and then the and the products that were used for those and I was just kind of off from there <laughs> so really it was just my boyfriend was kind of encouraging me to to try that as a new kind of art um, let's see also from Kosmolsky dolls on Instagram what inspires you so lately I'm totally inspired by vintage fabrics and lace and buttons and ribbons I'm just I'm always trying to get past the commission so I can spend a little time working on things like my tattered fairy dolls that are just like my favorite thing. I'm just totally inspired by just different kinds of ribbons and, and old like laces and things like that. But I'm also super inspired by a lot of different things like Alice in Wonderland and um, gothic things and Tim Burton. So and, and there's I have some favorite artists as well that I just am inspired by. Um, I also get a lot of nostalgic inspiration from like the 90s and the 80s and 80s music like of course Cindy Lauper <laughs> um, so yeah it's just things like lots of different things um, then from Los the Vampire Hunter on Instagram he asks how long does it typically take you per doll uh, that's a really tough one but it totally depends on the doll when like it takes much longer than it should, to be honest. Um, to root the hair, if I'm focused, it could take about an hour and a half. And that doesn't include cutting, thinning, and styling, which also together can take another couple of hours. And then the face-up can take anywhere from three hours to six hours, just depending on the detail. Um, then the costumes are... That's the costumes are the hardest to say. If it's a simple pair of shorts and a corset, then it's only going to take like an hour or two. But then, adding the trim, you know, could be like another half an hour. Then each piece of jewelry another hour. Then painting the shoes and so on. So I think the very simplest doll, like the value dolls that I sell at conventions, could take about nine or ten hours. And then the more complex dolls. I, I've taken up to five days, which I'll work like 12 hours or more each day. So I, I developed a spreadsheet for myself with how long it takes me for each individual thing that I do um, to make it a little easier to like calculate prices. And um, But when, uh, when I weigh the prices against the time, I think I'm barely making minimum wage with them, but it's something that I enjoy, so it, it doesn't matter. And I, I just, I work a lot. 
Um, it just, to answer the question, it just takes a really, really long time. <laughs> um, let's see. From Angie Riggio on Instagram, what is your favorite doll you've made so far? Um, I think there's, it's hard to say, probably the Cindy Lauper from the When You Were Mine performance at the VMAs. I remember that performance from when I was a kid and I watched it about 50 times literally when I was making the costume just to get it as close to right as I could and I just totally enjoyed every bit of that performance if you haven't watched it I definitely recommend it in um, I just really enjoyed making it into a doll and I was really thrilled with how it turned out it's the one where she's uh, got the orange and yellow hair and a, like a zebra striped vest and all the little um, like brooches all over it and I just loved her look there and I just loved that I made it into a doll and it was just really fun um, but it's it's hard to have one favorite I've, I've made so many. I also love all the Cindy Loppers and how they all turned out all the other Cindy Loppers and um, some of my other favorites other than her are my 17 inch Claudine with the horns and then I did a Oh, my Tattered Fairies, of course, are probably my, my all-time favorites just because they're a unique design. And then um, I loved my Two-Headed Mermaid and some of my very first ones. I used to make these dolls with big puffy um, side buns or big, uh, what do you call it, like Afro puffs, and I like all of those too. So anyway, um... Let's see, the last question. Were you an artist before you started repainting? How did you, or did you go to school to be an artist? From Raylene. Um, so I was an artist since before repainting, but it was more of a hobby. I did study art in school, but majored in interior design, which I didn't like. And I also went to cosmetology school, which I ended up not being, not enjoying being a hairstylist either. Um, so I worked at a bank for many years, but I always dreamed of being an artist as my main job. And I just became full time with art, doll art, about eight months ago. And it's a much lower income lifestyle <laughs> and a lot more work, but I'm much happier and I'm really enjoying it. Um, so anyway, so that's all the questions that I had. If I didn't get to yours, I must have missed it somehow. So I apologize. If you have a question, I'm leaving a pinned comment in the comment section below. Reply to that comment with your questions for the next Q&A video. And if you put it there, I won't miss it, I promise. Um, I'll try my best anyway. <laughs> so anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, if you liked it, I'd love it if you gave it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you. Bye.